Hi, I'm Marcus Fares, founder and editor-in-chief of Dezine, and I'm broadcasting live from the Dezine studio in London. Today, we've teamed up with BMW to talk about the upcoming iX model, the electric model that they say will herald a new age in mobility. And I'm delighted to be joined from Munich by the head of BMW Design, Domagoj Dukcic. <laughs> Hi, Domagoj. I said your surname wrong after all that rehearsal, I think. Dukats, Dukats, Domagoj Dukats. Perfect. This is okay, but you know, I mean, we shouldn't just limit ourselves on the name, so it's fine. <laughs> it's not easy. I mean, I'm foreigner as well, and so I, I'm used to it through my whole life in Germany that everybody had a problem. Even the board members today, they always pronounce it different, but Domago is fine. Hi, hi, Markus. Great to hi. see you. But I did get it right in the end, didn't I? Ducats. Ducats. <laughs> Ducats. More or less. Ducats. <laughs> Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Domagoj. Who are you and what do you do? Yeah, so again, I'm Domagoj Jukets. I'm uh, in charge of BMW design now for uh, two years, and but I'm already with the company for uh, 11 years. And I'm in car design for almost 21 years now. Yeah, I don't look so old, but uh, 21 years drawing cars and dealing with uh, yeah, uh, childhood dreams. So um, living, I was living in Paris for 10 years, also in Spain, always working in car business. And now I'm at the company I was always uh, dreaming and attached to since childhood. I was really also made a, the idea why I became car designer. I liked always uh, this brand and now yeah, somehow uh, a dream came true. Yeah, you can't force this always in your life, but suddenly I'm there where I wanted to be. And now we sit here and we can talk about some products we create. Did you always want to be a car designer, even from when you were a little boy? Um, you know, I mean, I think uh, everybody or not everybody is maybe blessed to have a clear talent in the beginning yeah? and that but if you even as a child everybody likes to draw but then when other kids are coming in kindergarten to your desk and say oh can you draw me also a motorbike or so and then you are always drawing you're already a sketch monkey at the age of five <laughs> and uh, somehow yeah I was always loving to to, to draw and uh, uh, somehow I I was I would say a little bit lazy yeah? and uh, I, I was always scared to, to, to work, in, in, to, to, to become like, a, like my father was working very hard and then I was somehow struggling that one day I will have to work as well. And when I found out at the age of 13 that you can, that there is a profession which is called transportation designer, I ran home and told my mother, hey, I found my, jo my, my job I can earn money with drawing cars. And that's how everything started. And from then on, it was I was looking, okay, what do I need? What kind of education can you do? And then it went quite regular, always from first job to yeah, where I am right now. But yeah, I, I, let's say there was no alternative for me in the beginning. Yeah. And um, you're head of, head of BMW Design. Uh, BMW makes a, a lot of vehicles, a lot of different types of vehicles. You know, there's emerging electric technology, there's traditional um, yeah, petrol and diesel vehicles. Tell us a little bit about the scale of the design team at, at Munich, at uh, BMW, and all the different divisions and, and what's going on in the company. Indeed, it's not uh, that easy how it sounds for everyone to just uh, invent to dream about something, to draw it, and then be it becomes reality. BMW is a big, big uh, company. And of course, we have, meanwhile, more than 40 products. Yeah? So if you imagine all the lines, one series, two series, and this goes to eight series, and then you have X cars, SAV cars. And linked to this one, it's not just uh, designing, it's also to develop uh, such a car. And so there are so many uh, interaction with so many departments. It starts with, uh, with marketing, with strategy department to just uh, see what kind of customers we want to reach with what kind of product. And then when you really finalize who is the customer, you start to ask design uh, to, to really uh, 
get a certain aesthetic or an experience which will um, which will address uh, a certain product to the needs of certain customers. And uh, in my team, um, there are 120 designers, uh, uh, boys and girls, everyone. So it's like for exterior design, interior design, color and trim, which are mainly uh, yeah, fashion designers. And then I have also two departments for our sub brands, so M design and BMW I design. But of course, it's, it's not just it's not just uh, inventing, it's also design is always to bring uh, this design technique uh, con uh, fusion together. And it's of course a big challenge. And you mentioned the M team and the I team. So M is the performance end of BMW, is that right? And I is the electric side of things? Yeah, somehow like this. It was like in the 40, 40 years, 50 years ago when um, BMW started his whole past and uh, we make sporty cars and we, we went with, with normal passenger sedans into, into, into racing. And this is what BMW was then famous for, that we were racing with four-door saloons. Yeah? And, and this was the start of, of this most powerful letter in the world, which is then M, this is the, the claim. And uh, today, it's the promise that uh, we build the more sporty, um, yeah, everyday car. And BMW I is more focusing on the pioneering side of BMW. BMW was always very sporty, but also inventing, always reinventing himself. And we gave with uh, the sub-brand BMW I, the pioneering side of BMW, a face. So thinking back to when you were 13 and you realized that you could earn money drawing cars, but today how much of your time is spent actually drawing cars? How much designing do you get to do and how much of your day is taken up with meetings and calls like this and engineering and, and other kinds of things? Okay, let's, uh, it's very depressing, but <laughs> 100% 100, 100 uh, everything else than drawing because of course, I mean, uh, in my position, you know, in a company like BMW, but I guess also it's in different companies similar. Uh, yes, I was designer and probably I was also quite successful as a designer, but uh, uh, the company, of course, needs in a certain uh, management uh, hierarchy than somebody who's also, of course, solving and creating and giving guidelines in terms of strategy to fulfill also the targets of BMW. So I was never taught to become a, a manager. Yeah, I never studied, I don't know, economy, but somehow I have to use um, my experience and my knowledge and my competence as a, as a designer to now lead the design department, um, which of course I have to understand everything what design enables and uh, what kind of possibilities you had with design. But my, my job is more enabling to lead and to open maybe new horizons for my designers and but then also to negotiate with board with uh, top management, uh, what we need to fulfill dreams yeah? that in five years, we can build our sketch, you have to, of course, negotiate a lot because it's budget, it's uh, legal requirements, it's technical, um, um, just possibilities. And so it's a, but that's, that's actually exactly the challenge of being a transportation designer, industrial designer. It's not art, it's, it's design. Yeah? Great, so maybe this is a good time for you to share your presentation with us. You're gonna talk a little bit about the IX range in particular, I think. Yeah, of course. I mean, I brought something with me to just uh, um, make maybe uh, clear what BMW stands for and uh, what we are dealing with. And uh, so I would like to start because I was already telling that with this age of 13, I was getting really in touch with uh, the brand and uh, um, yeah, uh, this company. And so I would like to tell a little story about heads and engines, because this is where everything started with BMW, because in the, let's say in the 60s, uh, there was, um, in the 60s, there was uh, just a successful businessman 
uh, which had to decide either he wants to drive very sporty, then he had uh, he could pick a Italian sports car or very elegant. But there was no solution that he could have both in one car, and that was uh, the beginning of BMW with the Neue Klasse in the 60s. We offered one car with a straight six engine and the head shows actually the elegant side because it was packaged the car that you could sit in the car with a head and this is also what makes this typical silhouette of bmw until today and that was such a successful story this combination of elegance and sportiness that we scaled this to almost 40 models and so let's say until today we have one brand one flavor and so um but many customers, many cultures, many tastes, yeah, I think it's time again for clear characters what made BMW so great. And because at the time with the Neue Klasse, it was so clear, it was a clear character. And it's important to fall in love with such a brand like BMW because we have much more fans than we have customers. We, have, we sell maybe 2.3 million cars per year, but uh, there are much more fans outside and this is uh, so crucial for a brand like bmw because it's a love brand and so there are just two rules actually yeah rule number one is to be stunning and uh, rule so joy is bow bmw means sheer driving pleasure but of course joy has much more facets and the most important joy to get in touch with a product is that it's stunning that it's bow and rule number two, because like in a human relation, uh, just having a nice superficial uh, exterior or, or, or uh, to, to be handsome uh, doesn't make love at all. Yeah? And so rule number two is make a difference. So joy should be definitely meaningful because this is what becomes then relevant for our customers that it's much more, it's vow, but it's also meaningful and has a personal significance to our customers. And so when I come back to this guy, which was this successful businessman in the 60s, changed also with the time. Of course, there are still businessmen which are successful, but they look a little bit different. They have also different needs and different values. But we don't have just this one. We have much more customers and we divide them in, let's say, expressive performers and elegant creators. Yeah? We don't, I don't talk about like conservative or uh, highly modern. The people on the right side, uh, the elegant creators, that's more or less 70% uh, BMW customers. They like a car, which you can go to theater, but also for a nice ride uh, for your weekend. And it's like everyday's car, sporty and elegant everything what we did so far and but they don't want to show off too much they are successful they want also to to um, express themselves but in a more harmonious way on the other side you have customers which are much more extroverted they have also the same values but they are, want to show off and they want to show that they achieved something and that's just something very natural in our society. And now coming to the products, which we also design then with the different needs of our customers, let's say for the expressive performers, this is our uh, recent four series, which was discussed and is discussed in, in social media, very controversial because of course we have a lot of fans and everybody thinks, oh, what are we doing with this lovely brand? And I mean, every designer here is so passionate about the brand and we know the history of BMW and we know also what it deserves and we know also our customers because we are dealing with them. It's just 20 to 30% of our customers, but they want to stand out. And that's the reason why we give these cars a completely different and extroverted look because people want to stand out. Compared on the same base, we have four series and this is the three series. These are people who look for more uh, stylish, elegant, aesthetic, more harmonious, also, of course, very sporty and also uh, um, yeah, state of the art, but in a completely different manner. And so um, we want to create a unique 
brand experience with this because we want to become a love brand. But to become a love brand, you have to be relevant for each customer outside. It's not that we please everyone with the same. You have to become really uh, relevant uh, in a unique way. And how do we get this all together? Of course, then it's also very important because luxury in the future with responsibility or and also with sustainability is not possible. And I would say we want to offer all these different desires and we hold this together over uh, sustainability. And then we come to this car, which is also for us elegant creator. But as I said, in this elegant creator and expressive performer, customer, uh, you have also different values. You have social climbers and you have social drivers. And let's say on the side of elegant creators, so the social drivers are more people, um, early adopters who, who are looking always for the latest thing and they are a little bit braver. And they have also still everyday's needs. And the iX, BMW iX, is more always towards future. So it's dealing with new things. And how can we get social drivers attracted by something uh, like an SAV. So it has to be sustainable because we know how uh, controversial is discussed these big cars, but a big house can be also very sustainable. And a small apartment in Paris, uh, which is old, is maybe less sustainable than a 500 square meter uh, villa, which is under new, um, new uh, requirements, very efficiently designed. And so this car, we also, as it's a social driver um, um, customer, we believe also that uh, in the future, people will also focus much more on the inner values. So this has much more to do, not just with the product itself, but also with what is really relevant. Yeah? Of course, so far social climbers, they want to express their identity also about the exterior. But here we designed the exterior more like a, like a shell, which is protecting a favorite space. And how you get, if you, if you are so much in a traffic jam, especially like in, in countries, China or all big cities, you, you, you don't want to waste your time. And it's very important that you think these cars more from an from a inner perspective, how do you want to spend the time moving in your car? And so this is what comes then to the iX, where we say this car offers an interior space, which is somehow very close to what you find and what you wish at home. It's a space, an area where you don't, where you are not distracted by so many uh, technology, no visible technology. It's a space where you really can uh, feel, uh, uh, let's say. Uh, uh, you get actually less uh, polluted by, by everything what, what makes you actually during your daily work uh, very stressed. And when you get in your car, you can just concentrate on, on the calm and uh, very uh, nicely uh, configured uh, user experience. And also the elements like uh, detailing in a very, um, I'm going to talk immediately about this, but uh, it's for us important that we don't show technology so uh, obvious. It's more, we, we call this shy tech. Uh, it's actually technology is only visible if you need it. And we believe it's important that you have still values, but that uh, um, consumption must be uh, without actually regrets. You, you should feel uh, that luxury can be also very responsible. Yeah. And the exterior uh, looks how it looks like. There was also like some people were looking, okay, but an X5 looks different. That has something to do that we address this car more because electrification today is still a topic where not everybody feels immediately comfortable. Uh, and uh, because it's a big change in, in infrastructure, it's a in daily use. And so we address this car, of course, and we want to show with this design that it stands for something completely new. And therefore we go here also a different way and the exterior should express this like a, like a shell protecting this very precious interior space of the iX, which we believe is in the car industry, a very new approach. And um, so we are not designing cars anymore in the future. For us, it's very important that uh, we are designing the experience of joy. Yeah, because we 
believe that we can become the experience company. So design so far was quite superficial. It was just seen from a visual point of view, but human beings, they have much more senses, they have five senses and just to see is just 20%. If you want to create really this joy of an experience, you have someone to address to more than just one sense. And this is what we try in very specific uh, customer centric experiences. So that was uh, a short presentation. I hope it was not too long, but. No, it was great. Thank you very much. And um, those images you showed of the IX, they were kind of concept sketches, but the car is actually coming out this year, right? It's going to be on sale. Yeah, this the, year. First, so tell it the first sketch was just in the very beginning was a concept. The other one uh, at the end, there were like our sketches from the production car, also the interior. You know, this car will come next year. Uh, you will be able to buy it, but uh, we will also communicate this car this year uh, with all the pictures and uh, yeah, you will be able to buy it. Yeah. And so tell us exactly what is what is the IX? It's an electric SUV, but what else can you tell us about it? Yeah, I mean, we can see that people in the world are this, I mean, it's somehow funny. On one hand, uh, yeah, people don't want actually that uh, cities are more and more polluted by cars. And on the other hand, you can see that the selling numbers, especially of these sports activity vehicles or SUVs is like enormous growing. Yeah? So not small cars, but these cars. And I mean, you can also maybe understand in the time in, in which we are now today that this, this, um, this space, this protected space where you have not somehow your, where you feel safe inside becomes much more important than in the past. Yeah? Who wants to use public transport? So this, this space where you can decide yourself to move from A to B becomes more and more relevant. And an SAV where you have a higher seating position, where you look over the traffic jam, uh, where you don't have to hide like in a, in a cave. Uh, all this is very relevant, we believe, because the customer, they make the decision. And on this, you have to um, give answers. And the IX is an interpretation. As we started with the X5, uh, in the in the 90s to create this sports activity vehicle. It's a segment which we actually invented to, to combine somehow this attractivity from such a product with the dynamism of BMW. The iX now brings the Xness, so how we call this, uh, um, yeah, this category, into the future. So more sustainable, also more focus on the interior. So where you spend your time and how do you want to feel in such a car? So it's a, it's a perspective change. And of course, BMW i is a perfect sub-brand to, to stage such an experience. And you said during your presentation that, you know, that big cars can be sustainable, just like big houses can be sustainable. And that there are concerns, aren't there, with more and more people buying bigger and bigger cars, especially petrol or diesel cars, that they're kind of canceling out any of the efficiencies that those cars are having through their, you know, from the more efficient engines and so on and so forth. So with the IX, how, how do you make that more sustainable? How do you make a big car that is green? No, it's not just, I mean, we, there are a lot of ways. I mean, at first, the production process is very important and also the resources you are using. And there's also clear commitment also from the whole BMW group that we will fulfill all CO2 emission uh, agreements, which we have also, even, even to be better than them, because we believe that luxury, and you can see this in the whole industry, is not to divide from sustainability. I mean, there is no future if you don't deal with these subjects. And it's like, I mean, a luxury product must be sustainable in the future. And we, think, we believe that this is inevitable. And so how do you do it? You have to see that all your suppliers, of course, or, or your materials you use, either they, are, they become circular, a car shouldn't be waste. Yeah? It should be actually that you find processes where you can just use your old cars and reproduce new cars. Of course, that's not yet the case, also not with the iX, but the iX does a lot of things. Yeah, it's like we, we, have in, we did the same thing already with the BMW i3, 
So the car is lighter because it uses uh, different technologies like carbon fiber, but also we we have a lot of um, recycled materials like the like the the, the floor uh, mat in the interior is recycled material. Even the the wood we we, we use, which is very reduced. Is a certified wood. So, and also we have a, a interior also without leather where we just stage um, different materials like micro fabrics or like uh, textile in a different way. That we teach also people that there is more than just the skin of cows, which can look very precious. And this is, of course, something. And therefore, I talk we have social climbers and social drivers. You can't just say, no, we offer now these cars. There are still people who want to, um, yeah, would think I, I was working my whole life and now I want to uh, somehow uh, just enjoy and I buy what I like. But of course, we see that in so society, there are some people who also want to lead a different way. And therefore, we have also differences in our portfolio. And the IX can't show just what BMW stands for right now, but we believe that BMW I should show the path where uh, BMW should be one day in the future. And so it's much more responsible uh, towards every use in the interior and in the exterior as well. Right? And you mentioned circular design and you said that, you know, not yet, we can't have circular cars yet, but is that something that is possible in our lifetime? Is it something that, that BMW is striving towards to have a fully circular automobile? I think this is a dream. I mean, we were always dreaming when I was a student that this is something we are aiming for. Yeah, This is something um, we want to achieve. And of course, if we want to become uh, the greenest luxury brand, yeah, of course, we have to think because it has to be also um, yeah, it has to be also uh, for us interesting in a way how we deal with our processes. And if you don't, if you can use your uh, previous models or previous materials, it's also from an economic point of view, maybe also interesting because you don't depend so much on different production. But of course, I can't solve these questions. Uh, we can just bring these ideas, but of course, it's not that easy. But um, I can just tell you that. Uh, BMW is convinced that uh, we have to achieve something like this. And therefore, uh, we are always uh, very pioneering in these aspects. Yeah. And where is the world at now in the development of new technologies to power cars? I mean, there's electric, of course, and uh, I know BMW was looking at hydrogen a few years ago. Are we at a point where we're going to switch to electric like really quickly or is there another technology that's on the horizon uh, in the uk we seem to be quite slow at adapting to electric but what's happening how do you think how fast do you think the change will be and, and what is the technology of the future yeah i mean this is also a very difficult question especially for a designer yeah, for us but because it depends on politics it depends on everything but there's one thing very clear that uh, that uh, we have just one earth yeah? and uh, that we uh, can't just uh, waste uh, resources and that we can't just pollute our, our planet like this. And I think there are a lot of brands who have a certain impact yeah? because uh, there are a lot of people outside, fans, you have a brand, strong brand image. And I think it's their duty to also take responsibility uh, towards a, a better future. And so electrification, is today, let's say, maybe because you don't have the same range, you have to fill much more often than a, a petrol car. And, and so there are some, um, yeah, some, let's say, disadvantages, which doesn't make every day's life so easy. Also, you don't have so many uh, charging stations. In China, it's completely different. Uh, they you can charge wherever you like, then also the range doesn't play such a role. And also the thing is that electrification is more expensive. So the whole powertrain is more expensive than the combustion engine, batteries. So that means that the same experience a customer expects, so let's say, is more expensive. But of course, a, a customer is not willing to pay now more just because 
uh, we have the, the problem to uh, reduce CO2 emission. Yeah? They don't care. So they are not willing to pay now thousands of euro more uh, for an electrified car. And that's where it becomes very difficult for the whole car industry because we have to enable the same product without emissions. Uh, but of course, the best thing would be for the same price. And if it's not the same price, we have to offer more. We have to offer a different experience. We have to offer uh, something new. And therefore, it's so important to create experiences which are for people worth sharing or for them so important that they say, I want this product. And you can see this in the industry. I mean, Apple did something similar. Yeah? I mean, they created a, a, an object, which is a telephone, yeah? but it's much more than a telephone. You have so many telephones, but it's like, the, the experience which you have and uh, how you deal with it, that everybody thinks I must have this object. And this is where you get then also people also attracted to this. The technology itself is not relevant as long people know, okay, maybe I get uh, I can uh, drive into cities because that's the, 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 the biggest problem in, in China. If you don't uh, drive electrified, then uh, you can't enter the city. Yeah? That's that's really, and then you don't, and then you can't sell any any products to any customers because they will choose uh, other brands. And what about autonomous driving? That's another thing that we were all getting very excited about. You know, we thought that within a few years everyone would be driving around like this. That the computer would be doing everything. In the iX, you've clearly thought about the interior of the car as being a more relaxing space, more, more like a home. But where are we at with the journey towards driverless cars now? Um, actually, I mean, everybody was thinking, especially when Tesla started and uh, everybody says a self-driving car, but all our cars are to a certain level, level two plus, how we call this, there are five different levels of autonomous driving. Um, Almost every company um, offers such an experience. It's okay. You can you can leave your hands from the steering wheel, but you are always in charge. So, okay, five seconds. You you have to retake uh, the the steering wheel, and the next level is level three, where you can really on highways uh, really uh, do other stuff. You don't have to watch on the traffic, and this technology is ready. Yeah? So all cars, I mean, also our competitors. They have this already built in, in, in their products, also the iX. The problem is um, that you need some legal requirements also because uh, who's, who will be charged if something happens? And there are so many things that uh, have to be solved on a bigger level because there is now a period where you have normal cars where people are driving and you have the maybe driverless cars and this interaction, how and how, I mean, maybe we can arrange that every BMW is com communicating with other BMWs so that this works, but there are so many different companies with different products and that makes this whole thing, of course, much more difficult than the technology itself is enabling it. Yeah? But um, this is something where, yeah, we believe that some years will uh, still have to come until you will have this level four or level five without a steering wheel for shuttles, which can also work today already. Yeah? If you if you put them somewhere, let's say on a on a on a on a show on a somewhere where you are completely out of the traffic, you can already today showcase level five. Yeah, but uh, really in public. Uh, this will take some time. But coming back to the iX, let's say what we wanted to design is the, that the joy of driving in BMW, we want to express also the, the, the joy of being driven. Yeah? And actually, three passengers today enjoy already this joy yeah? because just there's one person who's driving. So autonomous driving would change the experience just for one person for all the others it's already autonomous driving yeah so you have to deal already now with passengers what do they what do you offer to them you don't want to sit just like in a in a i don't know in a in an airplane where you just go in one direction you want to be able to spend your time 
maybe with more than just uh, looking just on the road. Yeah? And so you have to start to deal with this. And of course, when level three would uh, come, we wouldn't build immediately a new car. So our car, uh, which is a, has a life cycle of seven years, has to showcase, of course, uh, some qualities if it would be also autonomous driving for, our, uh, for the driver. And this we already showcase in the IX. Yeah. You mentioned during your presentation that people don't want to go on public transport at the moment. How has the COVID-19 pandemic changed the way people feel about their cars? Has it changed what they want from their cars? Do they want more space? Do they want more um, filtration of the air? Do they want more safety features? Does it, does it change the way that people see their cars? Yes, I mean, we believe that because also we can see that more people um, yeah, I mean, people are even, although the pandemic is, of course, for the whole economy, very critical, but we can see that we sell still cars. Yeah? And in China, we are selling more cars because people, but also in the rest of the world. So people are buying a car because they also uh, want to have this very individual mobility. Because um, also we, we talk a lot with uh, with. Um, uh, outside external partners to, to understand, okay, how society will change. But they say also a car will always stay relevant because a car is the, is the strongest uh, expression of freedom and self-determination. Yeah? Because what else? I mean, everybody, when you make your driving license, it felt like, okay, I have my own house. I can go there. I can go to the sea. I can sleep in my car. And you can just go from A to B. It's, you, don't, you don't rely on anything. And this will stay relevant in the future, even if you have all these Ubers and, uh, I don't know, um, um, share mobility, share mobility concept, they will stay one thing relevant for individuals. Human will always stay individualists. And they will always like also one part of their life to, to decide themselves to go there or there. And therefore we believe that the car in the future, and we know it also, will become and will stay very relevant. But then it has to offer something because if all cars will be electrified and all cars will have similar driving performances, what is the difference? It's then similar to air, air, uh, air companies where you fly either with one company, which is like, let's say, uh, uh, yeah, more like a discount uh, airline, or you fly with a more expensive airline. And what is the difference? The airplanes are the same. So the hardware stays the same, but the services, or how is the experience inside? How do you feel when you were flying with this or this uh, company? And this is, I believe, also what uh, the car companies have to uh, somehow face or so the experience in car experience or how 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 is the interaction between your personal um, uh, environment and what is for you important and how can the car be uh, somehow an extension of your private life and um, I was reading an interview you did with a with a, a car magazine about BMW, the kind of uh, the kind of icons of BMW design. So how do you how do you interpret BMW's design tradition to give cars that special brand appeal that you're talking about? So they're not the same as all the other other brands. What's special about BMW design, and um, and and how can you change that and make it more exciting and more relevant today? Yeah, that's uh, of course. Uh, uh difficult question and of course uh, nobody there's not one recipe yeah, there's something uh, you know uh, because it's a it has something to do with psychology it has something to do with your brand relevance how what a brand stands for you have to deal with each brand in a different way and then you have to identify what is really the differentiator between uh, your brand and others and so bmw for example, is one of the strongest icons in the face of a car, which is this double kidney, yeah, which is was in the past. BMW was not the first car in the world. Or, I mean, there were other companies who invented the car and BMW started quite late, actually somewhere in the 30s uh, to build cars. 
And so the, the kidney itself was already at the time not just the, the, the functional uh, air intake for, for the cooling system, it was also um, an expression of the brand identity, which was drawn in a more artful than just functional way. And this is what BMW stands for. So it, it's not just this classical form follows function because you don't need a kidney on your car. Uh, it's just a symbol which expresses um, everything what BMW stands for. And this was so relevant for BMW and such a big differentiator, not just between us and other competitors, but also in-house with in between our different products. And you can see over the years how this kidney, which is always just a double uh, opening, um, can vary over zeitgeist. There were like years where it was enormous, then it was small, tiny, and it was vertical, it was horizontal. And this shows how flexible or how strong this identity is. And now, after maybe two decades, we are starting to play again a little bit more with this strong icon. And of course, I mean, for everybody outside there, it, it's at first like a big shock. Yeah, What are they doing with my lovely brand? Uh, but we believe uh, that a company like BMW, which was always ahead, yeah, and this is also where we want to be. If, if, you, if you just uh, stay and you keep just to doing what you were doing so far, and we don't believe that this is then the right way. And therefore we have to be to stress the system. And of course, BMW i and BMW M, so strong sub-brands, you can go also a little bit more extreme. And this is also important. You, you need also to take risks. You have also to play uh, with something which looks almost so crucial that you shouldn't touch it. But uh, that's our job, especially in design, to always go to the border to see how far can we go to, to bring the brand uh, into the future. And you made the grills much bigger, but also with an electric car, you don't need a grill at all, do you? So how do you reconcile even the idea that you have these grills? Exactly. So you don't need the grill, but like I said, in the past, you needed air. But that was not the reason why we made the kidney. Yeah? Uh, the kidney is also an expression of the brand. It's like a monogram, I don't know, of Louis Vuitton. So it's like, it's like we have, of course, also the sign of BMW. But the kidney is much stronger than because it's also a functional element. It was in the past brand identity combined with, with functionality. Today, it's an electrified car but you have much more sensors. So you have also to implement some sensors somewhere. And the, the best thing for all these sensors, yeah, it's not just autonomous driving. You need so many sensors, also pedestrian protection, and they have to be in the center of the car. And in the center of the car, we have actually nothing because we have these two kidneys. And so the kidney is an ideal area where you can give the, 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 the brand uh, identity also function and with this one we believe also the the icon becomes even stronger because it's not it's what i said before it's wow uh, as it looks different and it's meaningful because there is also a use it's not such just superficial just that now we don't need air but we need still an identity in the face and the kidney will always stay for bmw so it's not it doesn't depend on the on the powertrain and final question for me before we go to the audience questions, because we have quite a few questions from our viewers. But, um, okay, so people are reluctant to use public transport at the moment. They want to have cars. Cars are getting bigger. So what is the solution for cities then? I mean, you can't put more and more bigger cars on the streets in cities or even anywhere. How, how can we design out congestion how can we design out um the 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 the, 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 the limited make, the make the most of the limit amount limited amount of road space that we have what's the solution to that this is also a question which we were dealing at bmw i with uh, because bmw i we always try to see what could become a problem in the future and so what you were saying because also at, with the i3, when we started to make an electrified vehicle, also at this time, 
nobody believed that they, this change will happen. And we were dealing with it because it can really be a big problem for uh, the conventional car industry. And so we were dealing with this very early. And now uh, the topic you were mentioning is also very relevant in the future, because maybe uh, if the government will close cities from cars, yeah, so then also uh, there are no customers who are interested in, in this uh, individual mobility. They would like to, but if the government or the cities would say and ban cars from the city because they say, yeah, but I mean, there are everywhere parked cars and I, I just lose space. And so uh, you, you are, we try always to design customer centric. And if then in this case, the city would become the customer. So let's say a big city like, I don't know, Shanghai or uh, other cities where you would have to deal with the government and say, okay, what's the problem actually? And maybe you can make cars which don't pollute, but they become more also, and this is then also more sustainable that the car itself is not just exclusively for the user. You can use it also from the outside. Yeah, you can use it that the car is maybe not designed symmetric because if it's anyway uh, autonomous driving, it could look more like an object, uh, like an architecture. And you can use it because you can see it from the outside. Maybe you can charge your mobile phone or there are like any things what you can really interact with the thing so that the city thinks, okay, with this product from this company, we can offer our citizens a greater experience. They can share the car and maybe also you don't in this case have to own the car, but the owner would be then the city. So it's a different business model. And this is now of course, very theoretic, but yes, it's very relevant for some cities, but we can see also that our customers, for example, uh, I think 70 or 60 percent of our customers, they are actually living outside of the cities. Yeah, so it's relevant, but for BMW, I think 70 percent of the people, they are like commuter and they have their houses outside and they go for work into the town. And so for them, actually, there's not this need. But Mini, another brand of our uh, group, uh, we already showcased a, a concept, a vision car. Uh, 2016, the next uh, 100 mini, which was dealing already a little bit with this topic. So you could access into the car to just read, to download music. So you could use the car in different manners. So not just as your own property. So the, the car become the car on the street becomes like something useful to the public, like a utility somehow. For example, but also then digitalization you can use for individual um, relevance. For example, you would fly from London to New York and you own such a mini. And then because you have your own uh, digital um, fingerprint and you come uh, to New York and you go to such a car and when you access, it's configured from outside, inside, actually like your car in London. So. You, you don't see any, so the, the car itself becomes more like a white sheet of paper, and it's actually just a host of an experience, just, just a, a product, but the experience and what is for you really personally significant uh, is the differentiator. And the car isn't your own, you don't own the car, it's not your possession, but it just becomes, customizes itself to your needs for the time that you need it. Exactly. You own, you own, you have a mini property on a signature, which of course you would also have to pay. It's a service you to, to deliver, but it's like over Spotify or so. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to own hardware, but of course you get a certain service. And here you would become a member of BMW or everything what the brand uh, experience would mean then. Okay, let's go to the audience questions now. The first one is a very easy one. Well, I hope it's an easy one. Question from Jay, who's watching on YouTube. What kind of colors will the IX be produced in? Green is my favorite color, he or she says. Oh, no, no. The head of BMW uh, can't tell you all the colors, yeah, but uh, we will have, of course, a range <laughs> similar. The, 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 car, the colors we, we, we use, of course, always with marketing and uh, 
with all the markets always discussed. And unfortunately, let's say 70 to 80 percent are always white, black, gray, because people always think, okay, I have to resell the car and then I don't want to go so risky. And all the cool colors, yeah, what I would say as a designer, have always like a take rate of 1%. Yeah? You use it for communication, but later nobody's buying it. And then it's always difficult for us to argue, okay, we want this uh, cool uh, gray or orange. And it's always difficult. For M, it's easier. For I, let's say we have some colors, but um, there is one blue-greenish color. Yeah? So there would be something for her. Yeah? Okay, but the answer is black, white, and gray, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, let's say 70, 80%. And then you have some other yeah. colors, which are, let's say, nuance of gray into some colors. <laughs> mm. um, IO Technology wants to know, will the IX be available in the USA? Of course. Of course. There's a long question now from Eric Torson. Are the new electric cars easier to maintain and repair when necessary than... than um, non-electric vehicles. Do you think existing mechanics will be able to transition to repairing electric cars? And in countries like South Africa, where they have daily power interruptions, how do you create an infrastructure capable of reliable charging of vehicles? There's three questions there. <laughs> well, all three questions, but I can answer in one because I would love to give you an answer on this, but of course, uh, how infrastructure is in any countries. It's not uh, yeah, my special uh, topic or I can't really give you an answer. Not even in Germany, we have the best charging situation. Yeah? But, um, and uh, I mean, what, what, what uh, concerning uh, that uh, mechanics, uh, of course, powertrain uh, is different, but everything else stays like on a normal car. You have... Uh, uh, similar things like a normal car because the interior stays the same. So this will stay uh, pretty much uh, the same like today. Uh, what maybe answers the question the best is that the complexity of the system is actually uh, less complex than on a combustion engine because you have less pieces. Yeah? So uh, uh, electrified engine is smaller, it's uh, simpler, in, it's much easier uh, but I can't tell you what it means later for maintenance. Uh, I can see that, for example, uh, Tesla doesn't have even uh, dealerships. So there must be a way how they uh, can uh, uh, deal with this, that everybody gets their maintenance. But we have so many dealers, they don't, they have just online um, distribution. So, but I can't tell you this, no, sorry. By the way, what about hydrogen? Is BMW still researching hydrogen and fuel cells? Yes, we are. Yeah, and we were doing this already in the past two or three times. And we believe also it's, we will always stay open to any new technology. But for the moment, it's clear that the whole industry and the whole politics, they are going for, I mean, price is important for our customers. And of course, um, yeah, that you can fulfill immediately uh, CO2 emissions or zero, uh, zero emission vehicles. And then battery electric is the easiest and fastest solution. Uh, hydrogen is something which is, of course, sounds ideal yeah, because you, you have bigger range, you, you just produce water. And, but the whole system is, let's say, quite heavy. And it's also not so easy to... Um, yeah, hydrogen is not so easy also to, to produce. You, you need also filling stations for this, which are, let's say, not for every day's use so, so practical. Yeah? If you have seen such a, such a filling station, it's a quite um, yeah, dangerous maneuver. And uh, so this we have to see, and you have to have a strong lobby in the industry that they also support this. Yeah? So, but we, we are, of course, uh, dealing with this. And you can see also some, mark on, some products on the market. I think Toyota has a production car, uh, which is hydrogen, but you can look also on the price. It's a mid-size uh, saloon for, I think, 100,000 euros. Yeah? So it's probably not the solution for our customers right now. Okay. 
Three more questions. Anna from YouTube asks, can you talk a bit more about shy technology? What kind of features does shy technology involve? Yeah, um, shy technology, what we mean with this, of course, shy means a little bit like, okay, uh, what we wanted to, we wanted to play with this word high tech and shy tech, yeah, because it sounds like high tech. It, you need high technology that you can make it invisible. It's very innovative, but as we wanted to get the interior as clean as possible, but it's a functional product, so you need still these old functions. But it shouldn't look like a machine. It shouldn't look like a cockpit of an, of an airplane. It should look more like a boutique hotel. So shy tech is, for example, you have speakers normally, and they're always highlighted. So you won't see speakers in the car because we have a textile used, which hides completely like in a, in a nice hotel room. You don't see where speakers are. Some speakers are in the seat. And so the experience is incredible. You have a sound. You have even a, in, in the seat a shaker, a, 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 which somehow exaggerates uh, the sound experience. So you, you don't need really visual features, but you can feel it. And for example, we got rid of all the decors. Normally in a car, you would see always like here a little bit of wood, uh, but somehow if you want to be really sustainable, you have to rethink and to refocus, to reduce also your elements. And so what we did is to, for example, the center console, what I showed in my presentation, is, a, is the only wood we use in this interior. So no other decor, but this wood is at the same time the interaction between man machine, this relationship. So you interact on a direct wood uh, element. So the, 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 some switches are without shut lines just implemented under the certified wood. And also, and, and this is something where we think it's a smart material, it's shy tech because you have somehow um, some luxury and some uh, precious elements in your interior, but at the same time, you combine function and, uh, and jewelry. And this is what uh, we understand under Shytech. And also, for example, another thing is also our glass roof. Um, normally, you would have like, I don't know, a Rollo or uh, something which uh, covers your glass roof, yeah, then, then you need like mechanics, uh, which which all uh, to, 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 to blacken out your screen. And this is uh, photo um, um, uh, chromatic. So you just put push uh, like in the Dreamliner 787, yeah, where you can just uh, darken this the screen just with technology, you just press it and it's like opaque or it's transparent. And this is what we understand with shy tech because it's not very loud, but it's very efficient and also highly, um, yeah, highly pioneering. Okay. Um, Patrick Mark Duffy asks, how are the in-cabin sounds created with the new BMW vehicles? You have to repeat, because Patrick Mark Duffy, now I was thinking about uh, a, an actor, <laughs> which I saw. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Yeah. How, how are the in-cabin sounds created? bit of a technical question yeah it's a technical a lot of technical questions today i'm just a, a stupid designer yeah, but uh, how it's created this is what i said i think we have 24 speakers and uh, it's um but is he meaning the sound of the car or the sound of music so because because we, I can tell both, uh, I can give both answers. Because for, of course, an electric car doesn't create sound, and BMW is a company or a cars which uh, use, and we are still producing uh, very nice engines, and they sound also very nice, and our customers like that. An electric car doesn't produce any sound except of this electric engine, this, and uh, so we have a cooperation with Hans Zimmer. Yeah, everybody should know him. I mean, he was, he's like also uh, doing a lot of uh, Oscar nominated uh, um, music for um, movies in Hollywood. And uh, he's, of course, German. He likes our brand and we have a cooperation. And we tried to find out how BMW and the iX has already some sound which we created with him, which we composed with him. So we give a certain character 
dealing to the experience you have if you're in a sport mode if you drive efficient and suddenly you are not just connected to the to the functional sound of your engine you can create something completely free so it opens up a completely new horizon and he's anyway an expert in terms of creation of sound and we know also from a psychological point that sound is actually the strongest element to to create deep uh, emotions or also um, memories yeah and something like this you can now use in a completely different way and and make the experience of acceleration of of calmness in a completely different way so this is how we going to create sound in the future yeah? and so the sound doesn't replicate the sound of a petrol engine it creates is it a new range of sounds exactly completely so it doesn't recreate the sound of the engine it's actually more uh, it's really a completely new symphony but we have different modes yeah? you have different experiences if you for example what is if you drive for hours and everybody's sleeping yeah? and of course maybe sometimes you don't want to hear anything but uh, even for this we can create some sound which then reacts also still on are you braking are you accelerating and it can make the experience of driving even more intense than before and this is what we want we want actually to design this whole experience of joy you should when you get out of our cars you should then just feel oh that felt somehow nice and should keep uh, you should just keep some very nice memories, uh, which is linked, of course, to all senses. And this, these sounds, is this something that you already have in BMW or is coming out in the iX? It's coming out in the i4 and the iX, yeah. So with all right. the electrified cars. Yeah. And, um, and just one more question about, is that, so are they musical sounds or are they kind of atmospheric, mechanical type sounds? Yeah, they... We have, we have different sounds and uh, I think you can also watch them on YouTube. There are a lot of movies uh, because we already uh, made a vision car, the M Next, which is like an electrified sports car. And already for this car, we were making a sound because we said also, okay, if it's an M car and a sports car, we need to have a certain, and there is an, a whole a bunch of movies where we, uh, where we also, um, show on social media to share what the sound experience is yeah? but it's not music itself it's more like you can compose almost the music the way you drive yeah? it's like you create your own music it's it's more philosophic yeah it's because it's like when you when you are sailing and you hear the wind in the sails this is also something which just happens from the nature and the electric engine creates of course also some some friction and we use somehow also uh, this elements and we combine them but there and I'm, I'm not an expert in in sound but uh, when we talk to him and we have also some internal uh, sound designers that's a completely uh, different world yeah okay and final question from surab salk from youtube do you think morphing interiors is the future of automotive interiors, so interiors that, that change, shift shape, move positions? Ooh, I mean, you know, there's not just one solution. This is also what makes competition. Uh, I mean, you have, for us, I can just answer for BMW. Uh, I don't believe that this moving or morphing interior would feel, I mean, it's a very cool idea, but if you know that the car, you need like this, you have to you need a seat belt and actually it's a moving object it's actually not just a, an atmospheric interior yeah so it's it's not very realistic and also i believe that something which because we are producing quite expensive products yeah? we are a luxury brand and so um, i believe that a certain environment yeah, should be also uh, quite stable and uh, should feel also uh, very uh, with a high value. And I don't think that if you morph that you would always have a different expression. It's like an interior design in a house. You have some, some major elements which are given and then you can create different experience with light, 
with material and these you can vary. Yeah? Maybe also we're going to offer in the future more digital uh, upgrades that you can maybe change your interior over uh, the experience, how we, how we, uh, how we um, animate this whole interior. Because you know that an object, just depending by the light, can completely get different um, impressions. So an object is always, they're very stable and always the same one, but just how uh, it reflects lights or how shadows fall, you can create a different atmosphere. And for us, that would be more the way because I believe that an interior should somehow also feel uh, quite um, warm, welcoming, and then it shouldn't change always the, the perception. Yeah? Brilliant. Well, thanks for answering all those questions. That's a lot of questions we had from the readers. And Domagoy, great to speak to you. Thanks so much for your time. And good luck with the launch of the IX when it happens. Thank you very much, Marcus. It was a great pleasure. Yeah.